Hi, I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyanasundaram. In this video, I will be discussing a few important aspects of patent ductus articiosus in the premature babies. So, what is the patent ductus arteriosus? The ductus arteriosus is a short blood vessel that connects to the connects the left pulmonary artery to the descending aorta. In the fetal circulation, which I have reviewed in one of the earlier videos, its role is to divert blood from the pulmonary circulation to the lower half of the body through the descending aorta. The main reason for this diversion is because the lung is not functional in the utero. The placenta does the uh, gas exchange function. When the baby is born, the exposure to the oxygen increase as well as the expansion of the lung provides a stimulus for the duct to close after birth. The physiologic closure happens within a few hours to 24 hours in the majority. The anatomic closure is complete over the next few days. There are a few situations where the duct should not be closed and these are the babies typically with the duct dependent congenital heart disease. Uh, you can review the video on congenital heart disease by Dr. Haitham on my channel. The closure of the duct in these cases can be catastrophic and we need careful management with prostaglandin infusion to keep the ductal patency till the cardiac condition is manageable. In the babies with pulmonary hypertension, persistent pulmonary hypertension, we don't usually consider treatment for the PDA till it resolves. And it's always better to have cardiology review in any baby with suspected PDA to review these contraindications before we decide on the treatment. So this shows you how the patent ductus arteriosus looks like. This is the uh, right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery and the ductus is coming from the descending aorta which you would see here and the red jet uh, is coming in. So this is the ductus itself and this is the stream of blood and uh, this is just to show you anatomically the patent ductus arteriosus between the pulmonary and the aorta. So the natural history of PDA in the premature babies is altered by nature of their prematurity itself. The wall of the ductus is less responsive to the usual stimulus for closure and so the duct may stay open longer. There is hemodynamic differences in the lung related to the underlying lung disease and this leads to persistent duct patency. So the preterm babies who have significant respiratory distress syndrome have a higher likelihood of having the PDA as well. So the natural history of PDA in premature babies, it tends to stay open longer and it closes later in many premature babies. So in babies over 30 weeks gestation or more than 1500 gram, it usually closes by day 4 in the healthy premature babies with or without evidence of respiratory distress. So in the more mature babies as we will discuss, majority of the time you don't need treatment. The median time to ductal closure was 71 days in the babies under 26 weeks. So this is the group where it stays open for a long time. The baby is exposed to the ductal steel and the other negative effects of the ductus. It takes 13 days or so in the babies from 26 to 27 plus 6 weeks. So the approach to treatment is mainly focusing on these two groups of babies. 28 to 29 weeks, they tolerate the duct better. Usually it doesn't cause too many symptoms and it closes by 8 days in majority. And babies over 30 weeks, it closes by 6 days. So it's a progressive improvement and the likelihood of symptoms causing problems is more in the babies less than 28 weeks. So the ductus does close spontaneously in approximately 73% of the infants if untreated, but many of them may have been exposed to the negative effects of the duct, which may lead to more morbidity. So why is the PDA significant? Though it closes spontaneously in majority of the preterm babies, there is a concern that it might contribute to increased morbidity. So a large PDA on day 3 in babies born before 28 weeks may increase the odds of death or severe morbidity, intraventricular hemorrhage, bronchopulmonary dysplasia and NEC. So though the weightage is different, we cannot be uh, categorical how much it will contribute to each of these but there may be a significant input. So the diagnosis of PDA is based on echocardiographic assessment. Uh, which is anatomic as well as the flow parameters. So it involves assessment of the duct characteristics, which may be the size of the duct, the nature of the shunt, whether it is right to left or left to right or bidirectional, 
and the flow velocity can be measured as well. Uh, the shape of the duct is quite variable as we will review next and uh, that's one of the complications of why the measurement may not exactly be accurate because it depends on the shape and the direction of the shunt. There should be an assessment of pulmonary over circulation and uh, overload of the left heart. So these measures may include left atrial dilatation and the LA-AO ratio or left atrium diotic ratio. Normally we take a LA-AO ratio more than 1.4 is to 1 as significant for the duct. Uh, the size of the duct which is significant can vary according to uh, the gestation. So anything more than 1.5 uh, millimeters in the extreme premature and anything more than 2 millimeters in the bigger premature babies can be considered. There is also an assessment of the ductal steel. The ductal steel is nothing but a reduced perfusion to the lower half of the body in the post-ductal part of the aorta because this blood gets shunted through the duct into the uh, pulmonary circulation. So this overloads the pulmonary circulation and uh, deprives the lower half of the body of some blood flow which is meant for it. This mainly affects the gut and the kidney perfusion. So this illustration is a Krichenko classification of the PDA and this shows the different shapes and sizes it can take and uh, the elongated type, uh, you can have the conical type so the shapes make it different also when we come to the device closure so a characteristic assessment is important and when you do the echocardiography depending on where you measure it if you catch the wide part of it or the narrow part of it uh, it can uh, make a difference to your size measurement and uh, it's also important to remember that this is not a fixed structure it keeps changing the shunt direction may keep changing it's very labile the size may keep changing so what you are getting is just a point estimate in a very level structure so you cannot put undue importance in the measurements but the overall assessment and the group of baby you are treating becomes very important so there is a difficulty in interpreting the evidence base for pda treatment for the following reason so most studies were done on relatively larger premature babies so most of the studies are 15 20 years ago and the PDA would have spontaneously closed in the majority so we now have the natural history more clearly defined. The treatment options have been changing so endomethacin was used for a long time and then ibuprofen took over in the mid 90s and now we have paracetamol for the past 10 years or so. In addition a higher number of babies underwent surgical ligation previously but now we are moving away from surgical ligation. The timing of treatment has been variable, the use of treatment has been based on prophylactic approach versus based on symptoms or echocardiographic findings. So its approach is changing and we are defining groups where it may benefit better. In many studies even the control groups were allowed treatment on physician discretion and this obviously confounded results. So there are two main approaches to manage the PDA. We could conservatively manage without any medical treatment focused on the PDA itself where it is a type of therapeutic nihilism you tend to ignore the PDA and hope that it closes with time. In majority of the cases as we discuss the natural history it will close with time but whether it causes any problem to the baby in the meantime is a question and the other part is the treatment of the duct. So in case the baby has having treatment the three broad strategies may include prophylactic, targeted treatment and symptomatic management approach. So conservative management is usually effective in majority of the babies at or about 28 weeks because the duct closes by 8 to 10 days on its own in majority of these babies and they are not going to be that symptomatic so we can wait and uh, it will close. Only a small proportion of the larger premature babies would need medical treatment for the duct and these are the cases where the duct stays significantly open and echo parameters are significant despite conservative treatment. And conservative treatment mainly covers relative fluid restriction. Uh, at the same time, we should not forget that we need to grow and uh, adequate growth is important. So restrict as far as you can. And we should use PEEP with non-invasive ventilation to avoid the respiratory compromise from the flooding of the lungs. The restricted use of diuretics mainly to reduce congestion related effects. So the diuretics don't have a remarkable impact. It doesn't have a direct impact. And in fact, some studies may show that the frusamide may have a negative impact in keeping the duct open longer. So it's better to give intermittent doses on and off to tide over periods when you have difficulty oxygenating or the baby is more tachypnic uh, rather than regularly giving diuretic therapy. 
The prophylactic treatment with indomethacin has been well studied and there are benefits like uh, reduced PDA occurrence which is obvious and reduced IVH. A far greater number of babies would need treatment than would need treatment otherwise. So majority of the units don't use this mainly because of the side effect profile of these medicines as well. And uh, because initial studies were done with indomethacin, there were further studies using ibuprofen as prophylaxis, similar effects but it's not widely used as well. The targeted echocardiographic approach is widely practiced and there are many authors who recommend that. The major group of babies where the treatment is likely to be considered or needed are the extreme premature babies at or below 27 weeks. And uh, there is some emerging evidence that targeted echocardiography by 24 to 72 hours by trained personnel uh, with the treatment of babies fulfilling certain clinical and echo criteria might be the way forward. So reducing exposure to the ductal flow and the ductal steel could reduce morbidity in these babies. So that's the way it works. Even if the duct doesn't close, sometimes there's an argument that it makes it less significant during the period and uh, babies might have better outcome. However, since the morbidities that we are discussing are all multifactorial, it's difficult to get clear-cut evidence supporting the same. And a uh, few studies are ongoing in different parts of the world looking at exactly this group of babies and with targeted echocardiography. So hopefully we will get some evidence. So this is uh, from uh, Professor Patrick McNamara's presentation and the examples of the measures of PDA significance is mentioned here. So we have the left ventricular outflow more than 1.5 times the right ventricular outflow, LA over ratio more than 1.5. So uh, we have the other different measurements. And uh, this was their uh, enhanced transitional care where they had an approach, small PDA and a low volume shunt they used to observe and repeat. Moderate to large PDA they used to treat with paracetamol and cardiac dysfunction is there, they would treat with uh, support with inotropes, mainly dobutamine and if it was associated with other congenital heart disease, the cardiologist would be reviewing. So symptomatic approach is more used in the bigger babies where conservative treatment is tried but the baby persists to have symptoms and uh, it could be related to the lung condition worsening where the baby needs more ventilatory support or it could relate to uh, gut where there is an impact of the ductal steel on feed tolerance for example. So if there is persistent feed intolerance and the baby has a hemodynamically significant PDA, I've seen a few babies who benefit from treating the duct with paracetamol or brufen. Because these are bigger babies with a lower risk of renal injury, uh, you could go for brufen as a first choice initially with uh, standard regime and if it doesn't respond you can go for the higher dose regime. But I tend to use paracetamol even in this group of babies for the first uh, trial. Uh, you would still need echo confirmation of the diagnosis and assessment of the hemodynamic significance before you decide to treat and you need to check if you have optimized the conservative treatment. Treatment. So this is one group of babies where you may get away with not treating as well but you need to do the conservative management well. So there are different medicines to treat the PDA. The most important used previously was indomethacin and uh, ibuprofen started getting introduced in the mid 90s and then it became very prominent. So uh, both are equally effective uh, and they work as COX inhibitors and they close the PDA in about 60 to 70 percent with some recurrence rate as well. Uh, indomethacin used to have more renal toxicity and GA intolerance and ibuprofen was replacing it. The Cochrane review confirms the same that the efficacy is similar but the side effect profile is better for brufen. Oral ibuprofen has been shown to be equally effective as IV form with less side effects. It is less expensive as well. And uh, in the extreme premature babies, unfortunately, uh, both of these have a higher risk of renal failure and I've seen a few cases with acute renal failure. So once paracetamol came in the first week, especially with the fluid shifts and everything happening, we tend to use paracetamol more. Uh, the risk of spontaneous intestinal perforation increases as well if you're using these along with steroids. So paracetamol has been used for the past uh, 7 to 10 years as a treatment for the PDA and some studies were looking at it even before that. It works by directly inhibiting the activity of prostaglandin synthetase at the peroxidase region of the enzyme. There are multiple studies that show comparable efficacy to brufen but early treatment seems important. There are some studies which don't show similar efficacy as well and especially the ones uh, which wait for the symptoms or the treatment is delayed. 
The side effect profile is overall better with less GI side effects and some groups suggest that the efficacy of paracetamol could be related to its effect on increasing pulmonary vascular resistance which itself reduces the impact of the PDA shunt. There has been some concern of impact on future neurodevelopment and this was mainly based on a review of maternal paracetamol treatment and its impact on infant development and this could be an indirect effect as the reason for which that mother uses a paracetamol could be a febrile infection and uh, as we know the systemic inflammatory response associated with fever and infection has a negative impact on the developing brain and this could affect the neurodevelopment so it's like a uh, association rather than causation and careful neurodevelopment in the long term is essential in any future and uh, present studies that look at the use and this is mainly to rule out this possibility though this is my opinion that most probably it's related to the underlying cause for which the paracetamol was used rather than paracetamol itself. Surgical duct ligation has largely fallen out of favor as there is no evidence to show that delayed surgical ligation helps. The post ligation syndrome is well defined as well and it can lead to worsening of the cardiorespiratory condition due to changes in the circulation in many of the extreme premature babies. So these babies are adapted to a certain form of circulatory pattern and when it abruptly changes they don't cope with it we have to have a strategy to manage it as well. So the number of babies who undergo ligation has dropped significantly for various reasons. One is it doesn't have a significant impact on the outcome and secondly we face this negative impact as well. So non-surgical device closure uh, in using amplified Sir Piccolo occlude as well as many similar devices. They are now FDA approved as well and they can be used in babies as little as 700 grams. So they can be inserted using a transvenous approach, you don't need to arterial catheterize and uh, only few centers have it, so many units in Canada and US have started using it, uh, but the cost may be a rate limiting factor and there may be migration of this occluding device or it may displace, uh, it can embolize, so we have complications from these as well. You can see how tiny it is and this is how it looks like. To summarize, management of the PDA in the preterm population continues to be a hot topic with no clear resolution of the debate. Majority of the babies after about 28 weeks would not need any specific treatment for the duct with less than 10% of these group of babies needing pharmacologic treatment, even this may be an overestimate. In the babies under 28 weeks, a higher percentage could undergo treatment. As we discussed in the natural history, the babies from 26 to 27 weeks behave differently, so your approach has to be different in that group compared to the babies 25 weeks and below. And in this group, in the first week, paracetamol at 15 mg per kilo per dose QID could be the preferred option. And uh, if it fails, we could use brufen if there is no contraindication. And ibuprofen traditional dose is 10 mg, 5 mg and 5 mg at 24 hour intervals. It can be used as IV or oral preparation. And in more mature babies, a higher dose of 20, 10, 10 could be considered and it might be more effective as well. So uh, I hope uh, this discussion is useful and uh, please do share. Thank you.